This talk will be dedicated to healing our wounds through love. Start with a very simple poem that maybe most of you learned when you were in first grade. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. All of us belong to the Humpty Dumpty Club because all of us fell off the wall and are wounded because of sin. As a result of original sin, all of us entered into the world with our souls wounded by the sin of our first parents. Then as a result of personal sin, actual sin, we have afflicted new wounds upon ourselves. But good news. Jesus Christ came to heal the wounded. We read in the prophet Isaiah that by his wounds we are healed. My friends, either we are going to be wounded wounders or wounded healers. It's either one or the other. A wounded person is going to end up by wounding many other people. This is the teaching of the famous writer Henri Nguyen. Either we'll be wounded wounders or we'll be wounded healers. Listen to the story of how a wounded man was healed and then how we can be wounded healers in a wounded and broken world. This story you can read in Luke chapter 10. A lawyer came up to Jesus and said, Master, which is the greatest of all the commandments? And Jesus said, you've heard it said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, than to love your neighbor as yourself. So the Lord, to justify himself, asked the Lord, but who is my neighbor? And our Lord gave one of the most famous parables in his teaching. And it's called the parable of the Good Samaritan. A man on the way to Jericho was beaten and left half, half dead. A priest passed by him and a Levite passed him by, refusing to help him. Then the Samaritan the Samaritans were despised by the Jews. He looked at the man lying half dead on the roadside and he was moved to compassion for this man. He bent over. He placed this man on his beast of burden and he brought him to a nearby inn. And to the innkeeper said, Take care of him. He gave him some money. And on my way back, if there's more expenses, I will pay you on my return. Jesus asked the lawyer who, indeed, was the one that loved most. Obviously, it was the Good Samaritan. This story is my story and it's your story. The man left wounded on the roadside is all of humanity. Because we are born with a wound of original sin. And even after we're baptized, we still have those bad tendencies within us. 
which are called the capital sins. Gluttony, lust, greed, sloth or laziness, envy, anger, pride. This is our wounded human nature. If we give in to these tendencies or proclivities that are called capital sins, then they become actual sins. But good news is this, is that Jesus came to heal wounded humanity. He came to heal you and to heal me. He came to make us whole. He came to give us life and life in abundance. So who is the Good Samaritan? The Good Samaritan is Jesus Christ. But also the Good Samaritan, you are called to be the Good Samaritan also. But the order has to be this order. First, we have to recognize that we are wounded. We are wounded in our minds, our hearts, our wills, our souls, we're wounded. But Jesus Christ, the Good Samaritan, the wounded healer, is ready and willing to help you to heal those gaping wounds. So where does he take this wounded man, half dead? He takes him into the inn. And the inn, my friends, is symbolic of the church. The church is a refuge. The church is an oasis. The church is a place of solace. The church is a place of comfort. But also the church is a hospital. The hospital is a place where we go to, to overcome our sicknesses, our diseases. Within the church, there indeed are sacraments that are called to heal us. Baptism heals us of the original wound of original sin. Confession in this year of mercy, Pope Francis is encouraging priests to be available to hear confessions and encouraging people to have trust and to go to confession. They can they can be healed of their wounds. And the specific sacramental grace that comes from confession is that of healing and the Eucharist. The most holy Eucharist, which is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Its specific sacramental grace is nourishment, but also it is healing. It heals us of our wounds. So once we have been healed of our moral, spiritual wounds by Jesus Christ, who indeed is the divine physician and he is the wounded healer, and we can be a source of healing in a world filled with wounded individuals. It's a very interesting story of a 15-year-old girl that was experiencing an overwhelming sense of depression. Life didn't seem to have any meaning. She was questioning why, why she was even here in this life. So her mother was floundering and trying to 
find a response to this girl's depression, her daughter's depression. So she decided to take this girl to a professional psychologist. So the girl was taken every week and had an hour session with his professional. And would she be able to unload her problems to this professional? The professional was a non-believer. This girl was brought up and raised as a Catholic. But she was lacking one thing. She had not brought her wounds to the wounded healer as of yet. Days pass, months pass, even years pass. The girl was no longer 15 but 25 years old and still she suffered this depression from her inner woundedness. So one occasion the psychologist wandered into a church in the big city. And what did she see? She saw this girl that was in the church. And all of a sudden, the psychologist saw a man dressed in a black habit that I have now, the religious habit, and he saw the priest open up the door to this little booth. Almost looked like a little closet. And he turned a light on that was on the very top of this booth. And this man went into the booth. And this woman, 25-year-old woman, that was considering even suicide, entered into this little booth. And she was in that booth for three minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes. All this time, the psychologist had her eyes fixed on this little booth that we call the confessional. After the ten minutes, the confessional door was opened wide. And the psychologist, who was a non-believer, witnessed an extraordinary miracle. This girl, who had been suffering a very dense, profound depression for 10 long years, a professional had never seen a smile on her face. She opened up the door, and she had this radiating smile. A radiating smile from ear to ear. And the psychologist said, she put her head in her hands and said, what I tried to do in 10 years of treatment and consultation with this girl I was not able to accomplish in it happened in 10 minutes in that little booth that the Catholics call the confessional. So my friends, I think the message is very clear that we are all wounded because of original sin, because of actual sin, because of personal sin. We're all wounded. But the good news is this, is that there is a doctor in the house. There is a doctor in the house. And that doctor is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has come to seek out the lost sheep. 
He has come to lift up the wounded. He's come to heal the brokenhearted. So I encourage all of you in this year of mercy to allow Jesus Christ who is the wounded wounder to heal you of your brokenness. Reminding you of the five classical traditional steps to make a good confession. Examination of conscience. Go through the Ten Commandments. Examine your life in the light of the Ten Commandments. Sorrow for sin. Our sin is what wounds ourselves and wounds our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Firm purpose of amendment. We want to make a good confession then we have to decide to avoid the near occasion of sin. Avoid any person, place, thing, or circumstance that can lead us down the slippery path of sin. Then to confess our sins to the priest, recognizing that the priest is a representative of Christ. He acts in persona Christi. He's alter Christus. So it's not so much the priest that is forgiving you your sins, but rather it is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that forgives us. So that when the priest hears your sins and he gives the words of absolution saying, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is true that you are truly forgiven. A captive has been set free. The wounded individual has been healed. Jesus, who is the divine physician, he came to heal our wounds. You indeed are healed of these gaping wounds that you contracted because of your personal sins. We want to rejoice. We want to rejoice that we do not have to be walking around with these gaping wounds that get bigger and bigger. Because as we said earlier, either we are going to be wounded wounders or we are going to be wounded healers. It's all up to us. So the Good Samaritan is Jesus Christ. You are that wounded man on the pathway of life. But Jesus Christ wants to lift you up, place you on the beast of burden, bring you into the inn so that you can receive healing from these gaping wounds. Then you can be a source of healing in a broken world. So as we said earlier, at the top of the talk, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. 
Welcome, my friends, to the Humpty Dumpty Club. But the good news is this, is that you are Humpty Dumpty, but Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Divine Physician, can heal you of these gaping wounds so that you will no longer be a wounded wounder, but you will be a wounded healer. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.